This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex. Big red letters there. Yeah, and the white letters say the ramble. That's the name of the program here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, up to uh, up to uh, Connecticut we go. Connecticut. No, Massachusetts. Mass- Massachusetts. Why? I don't want to make you that much closer to me than you already are. Hi. Yeah. Uh, that, that's Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen, and he is. Hey, folks. We talk to him every week because he's fun to talk to, and he's interesting to talk to. Uh, anything new in your life? No, well, I told you my tooth fell out. Y- yes. So I got to go to the dentist tomorrow, and they got to dig in there and dig out the root. So that's exciting. Yeah. And my TV only has sound; it has no picture. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, so it's like uh, radio. It's like... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well. What, now, which, which do you think is the worst problem, the tooth or the TV? The TV. <laughs> the yeah. tooth I can deal with. The TV, I don't know what to do. I got trouble with the tooth over here. It's, right. It doesn't... I don't get toothache. No toothache. It's just kind of sensitive sometimes if I if you uh, if I bite down on it it's a little sensitive but not right. not really sensitive but there's no toothache there so well, I, I have no tooth at all so I, there's no toothache so I don't know what it what it is well you know maybe maybe I'll have them pull all mine out and, you know yeah right you don't want to do that trust we, me we can do the toothless show or something like yeah that. right yeah, right the yeah. tooth is elder Cocker show exactly so so now is it will this be the end of your teeth problems one can hope i mean it's been going on now for five six months why all these tooth problems was did it have to do with the drugs or something yeah yeah it finally caught up with me really okay yeah yeah but but you you haven't done drugs in what 15 years 16 16 years now 16 years It'll, it'll be 17 years in july so, you know, uh, it, it's kind of like you should have gotten a uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You should have gotten a, pass. A, a, a bonus for quit, right. for quitting. Okay, right. I should have got a pass. I had a doctor once. I went to a urologist once, and I said, uh, he said, "Oh, well, we've got to do a cystoscopy on you." That's when they take this scope and put it up your penis. It's really oh no, it's oh no. I, I know it it's it's not as bad as it sounds, but it is as uncomfortable as it sounds. Okay. Well, it sounds horrible. He did it twice. Yeah. You know. Right. Well, because every time he did it, he could make five hundred bucks. You know, and it didn't. Every time he did it, he didn't find anything. Right. Uh, at one point, I said, "Unless you're looking for gold up there, get the hell out." Okay, you know. Right. Uh, d- right. Right. L- right. L- see what you want came to find out and get out of there. But anyway, he said to me once. He said, um, uh, "Well, you know, you might have bladder cancer." And, and I said, because he found a little trace of blood in my in my urine, which I always had, until this latest doctor I have who said. Well, then after I find a little trace of blood on the dipstick thing, I go in and look under a microscope and you don't have any blood in your urine. If that guy had just done that, but he just saw that I had blood in my urine, he says, you gotta do cystoscopy. So I said to him, why? He says, you might have bladder cancer. And I said, bladder cancer, why? He said, well, it says here, you smoke two packs a day. That's two packs a day for 40, for 20 years. That's 20, 40 pack years of cigarettes. I said, "What does that, Is that have to like do? dog years?" Yeah I, yeah, I said, "What does that have to do with it?" He says, "Well, that might have you might have bladder cancer," and I said, "So really, what you're saying is I shouldn't have ever quit." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, don't laugh too hard. We get to see that tooth, and you look, right. you yeah, you look like a hillbilly. Yeah, no kidding. Or the biggest seven-year-old. Yeah, yeah. 
but uh, anyway, so I mean, do do you tell them when they when they when you go to the dentist and they they see that your tooth has fallen out? Do they ever say to you, "Oh, we know you're in show business. We better fix this up fast"? No, no, no. Because I don't tell them. I don't tell them what I do. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, when when I first started out as a doing stand up, I told everybody. Yeah. You know. I tell I, you know, I check into a hotel and it's like, I'm the comic, I'm the comic, you gotta come see, I'm the comic. Now I don't tell anybody. I don't tell anybody. No. Right. Why don't you tell them? I don't know. I don't think it's that important right anymore to tell everybody I meet. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, in this, in this case, you should tell them because cosmetically they might want to, like, put in some kind of temporary something in there. Or tell you to use a chiclet or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. A chiclet. I mean, suppose suppose you were making a movie right now and that tooth fell out. Right. They'd have to well, do. Well, that would be different. That would be different, Alex. Yeah, but I mean, they, they would have to do something fast, uh, or at least a fast fix. Right, right, right. A temporary fast fix. Yeah, I mean, um, I had a tooth uh, here missing for a while until I had the implant put in. Right. And uh, it was, um, uh, but it was in a place where you would never see it. This one's kind of right. where you might see it. Right. If I ever, oh, there goes your phone. If I ever, uh, if I ever uh, had it pulled or something, which might have to happen, but right. you really won't be be able to see it because I don't open my mouth like that. You know, so right. I'd have, right. To, I'd have to go like that, you know. Right, mine's in the front, so you can see it. Oh yeah, yeah. I just saw it when you were smiling, so I'm right. I'm gonna try not not make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, they should say, okay, well, I guess I got to put a bridge in there or something to something fill that up. First, I got to clean. First, I go in tomorrow and they clean out the root. Yeah. So that's gonna be. A project, you know, because they're gonna give me Novocaine up in my upper palate. Yeah. So that'll hurt. No, well, no, it just sting. It, well, they uh, that's uh, they always do it in your upper palate when you're it's an right. upper tooth, you know. And they go in there, and it, it's uh, uncomfortable for a while, but not as uncomfortable as it would be if they worked on you without it. Yeah, no kidding. You huh? know, so that's the benefit to the uh, to the that tooth to the novocaine yes folks we're not talking about health concerns today we're talking about dental dental oh, what i love about my health concerns is uh, when my wife ever says something to me like uh, can you please take the garbage out because every night we have to put the garbage out into every our, night into our hallway and then in the morning they pick it up yeah or whenever i have enough garbage to do that okay. right and she says, so if you t go take out the garbage. And I go, I can't. I've got cancer. <laughs> you don't have cancer. <laughs> well, I do, actually. Technically. You know, after five years, I'm probably out of the woods. But you know. Right. Right. But uh, but I can always I can always pull the cancer thing. I, I've done that when I got, like, my, uh, uh, my what do you call it, shots, my uh, uh, vaccinations for COVID. Right. You know. They put me right. Have you, gotten the, have you gotten the second booster? Oh, I got, uh, yeah, I got the second booster. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So you know, hey, if they if they gave a new booster every week, I'd be there. Yeah, me too. You know, me I mean, too. I mean, uh, I I'm I don't want to die from that. That's not a nice way to die. I went to the uh, senior center to get my second booster. Yeah. And they gave me a a, a gift card for twenty five dollars. You know, that's what they say they're doing. They've never done that with me. I've never gotten any swell gifts and prizes for getting my vaccination. No, I didn't expect it. I went and got my first, second vaccination. And then I got my, bo I think I got my booster. And then they announced that in order for people, if people go out and get their uh, their first vaccination, we'll give you $100. Right, 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 right. And I'm right. going, wait a minute. Why don't you retroactively give me the $100? Well, they're supposed to send us out another stimulus check. Oh, well, the stimulus check's a different thing, though. Right. I never got right. that for some reason. I, I never saw the stimulus check. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Maybe we had to apply for it or something? I, I You know, I don't know. I don't know how it works. Yeah. But, hey, I'm a senior, and I need my stimulus check. 
Right. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm really an old fart. Got nah. it. Well, no, I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking about doing? I'm thinking about... What's that? Well, like when I, when I, uh, oh, who's calling me? Stop. Um, when I'm, when I'm doing uh, interviews and things like that, um, uh, I, I've often thought about like, uh, let me see here, doing this. Wait a minute, where is it? Stop video? No, I don't want to stop video. Huh. I guess I can stop my video. Let me see here. There we go. Just doing that. <laughs> and then, then everybody can like, you know. It's like doing a show with, Al with uh, Bubbles. It's like doing a show with Bubbles, right. So, anyway. Yeah. Um, by the way, I talked to, oh, uh, you know, you're, you're very close to the Dursts. Because right. they're, they're your mother and father. Right. Or surrogate mother and father or something right, like right, that. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Well, what happened was, Will, see, this all comes down when you're old. All you're talking about is other people's ailments and so-and-so died and whatever. But um, um, Will, in case people don't know uh, Will Durst, but he's done the show a lot, he had a stroke about uh, two and a half years ago. All right? Right. And uh, he's been having trouble. He can't get out. They still have him in bed because they say until you can put weight on the, the one leg and and use it to kind of walk, uh, but be able to stand on it, we can't do anything. And the thing is, he's been in great pain in that leg. Right, you told me he, he broke his hip. Well, no, what happened was for like the last year, he's been complaining about the pain, the pain, the pain, the pain, and he hasn't been able to use that leg. And finally he goes to the doctor and he says, do me a favor, you know, humor me. Take, right. an, take an x-ray. He says, okay, that's easy enough. Send him down the hall, gets an x-ray, comes back, looks at the x-ray and says, oh, you have a broken ball joint in your hip. Right, you tell me this. Okay, well, the, the, now this is the sweet part about it. So now Debbie, his wife, Right, she already had one titanium hip, but she has right. to have another one installed, put in. Okay. Okay. So she has to have her hip operation. So they have their hip operations within two days of each other, and they wind up in the same hospital room. Oh, really? And I called them the other day, and it's so cute. She's across the room. And he's lying in the bed, and she says, for the first time in two and a half years, I can hear him snore. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, wow. It, it's really sweet. How know? cool is that? Well, I mean, it's got to be wonderful for him to have her around. They've never been able to spend a night together. That's right. In two That's and a right. half years. So, you know, and uh, then the, I, I wonder if he'll ever get to go home. Uh, I think so. I think now that they've solved this hip problem, he's just got to go through therapy and be able to stand on it, put right. weight on it, and it, once that happens, he can go home. Hmm. You know, so here's hoping, you know. Yeah, here's but, hoping. I mean, when you say, will he ever be able to go home, and you go, God, he's been in that nursing home for what, you know? Two and a half years. You know, at least in that nursing home for two years. Right. And you go, you know, that's not fun. No, but you told me he got both hands working, right? He's got both hands working, yeah, yeah. So he can type. He can type, yeah, yeah. This is a guy, ladies and gentlemen, who's a really good friend and a very good friend to Steve as well. And he he did the worst thing happened to him that could happen to a comic. He had a stroke. Right, a massive now, stroke. Now, some people have minor strokes and they can get back on stage and, you know, they've got it back again. I had a minor stroke. You had a minor stroke? What, what, yeah. What, did it leave you with anything bad? Um, yeah, my right hand. My right hand is constantly numb and cold. Numb and cold? Yeah. You, which hand? Right. Oh, God, that's the one that I have a bad hand here because I fell. Right. And, Tell me. And it still hurts me. And, right. and right here, uh, I get used to get shots for arthritis right there, but it seemed to have brought the arthritis back worse because I fell. So I've got to go and get another shot, but it's my fingers getting them together like this is kind of more difficult. Right. And, and see, folks, 
no young people are going to want to watch this, okay? But uh, this is my favorite hand because I it's do. It's your dominant hand. It's my dominant hand. You right. Know, it's the one I eat with. It's the one I write with. It's right. the one I with. Right, right, know, right, right, you know? right. I mean, it's a very important hand to me, and I have to have full function if I'm going to have any kind of a sex life these days. Yeah, so, my, my right hand is my dominant hand. <laughs> yeah. And also I get tremors in it. Well, I wonder why why this hand? Why didn't I do, why not this hand? And the thing is, when I fell, I probably, to break the fall, put out my dominant hand. Right, of course. You know, you wouldn't of put course. on your undominant hand, although that would that would stop your fall too, but you don't, you just don't immediately, you, you know. Right. The left, I can't think of many things I do with my left hand. I don't no. even give people a finger with my left hand. No, you know? no, of course not. Yeah, you know, I wonder if people who are lefties give the finger with their left hand. I bet they do. Of course they do. They yeah. do everything with their left hand. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of it's 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 uh, dominant, you know, and uh, it's my problem is that it's dominant. So you know. But um, so where were we? Oh yeah. So so Will's Will's. You know, uh, hopefully this will get him to a point where at least he can go home. Right. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, she she said to me that he the problem with it is, is that if he comes home, she she built in a uh, one of these elevate you know one of these stair elevator things. Right. 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 A chair. A chair. Uh, so they can get upstairs. Uh, but she said he has to be able to get up himself and either the walker or something else be able to get around. Right. She said, because if he has to get up to go to the bathroom, I'm a, she's a little woman. She's a, you know, right. very small woman. She says, there's no way I could lift him up to do it. Right. So right. he has right. to be right. able to do it himself. He has to be able to get out of bed, get to the walker if need be, or crutch or whatever. And right. then go uh, go to the bathroom. Then he has to sit on the seat, he, she said, which I don't have the ability to pick him up once he sits in the seat. So Right, right, right. He has to be able to get himself there, up and down. There has to be a certain amount of function in order for him to, to go home. I was getting my car serviced yesterday, and there was a woman in the waiting area who had had a stroke, and she was using a, a pretty heavy uh, walker to get around. And she, she only had to use the, like one leg pretty much. And she was really slow getting around and had a real dominant limp. Yeah. And I think that's what Will will be. I remember a show called The Goon Shows in England, and there was a joke they had where a guy, he walked with a pronounced limp, pronounced limp. <laughs> We'd like to start this show by saying good evening, <laughs> and in that order. In that order, yes. So you know the shows then. Yeah, yeah I do. Yes. Spike Milligan. Uh, Peter Sellers and Harry Seacom. Seacom, yeah, yeah, you're right. Seacom, yeah, you, you. I'm glad you were a fan. I, I was always a fan of those shows when I was growing up. These were shows yeah. on the BBC in England called the Goon Shows. Which, if you like Monty Python, guess what they listened to when they were growing up? Right. Okay. Right. 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 That's where they got their sense of humor from the Goon Shows, which was completely anarchistic comedy. Oh yeah. It never nothing made any sense. But it made perfect sense. But it made perfect sense, exactly. So right. lines like, you know, he walked with a pronounced limp pronounced limp. Right. You know, uh is the kind of humor that they had. And it was just crazy. Just crazy. Uh and more comedy, I think, most more British comedy, modern comedy, has been influenced by the goon shows than any single. Oh, absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And and Python will admit that. Oh, they they have no qualms about it, you know. No. Uh and that's where Peter Sellers got his start, became you know, right. a star. And um uh, Spike Milligan, maybe one of the he wrote most of the shows. Right. Uh, is probably one of the greatest comedy minds in history. Right, 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 right. But here in America, if I mention Spike Milligan to people, they go, who? Right. You know, they don't know who he is. And yet, they, they, I go Monty Python, they know that, and they don't realize that a lot of the comedy that they've seen in the last 50 years 
it's all coming out of England has been influenced by the goons. Actually, there's one radio skit that the Goon Show did that Python did in a film. It's about stealing an office building. Uh, I don't think that was the thing they stole. I, I think they stole it from an episode in which they took the uh, a prison in... In, right, in, right, in, right, in, right, in, right, in, right. But it was stolen from the Goon Show. Yeah, well, it was a prison in England, and they decided to float it across the channel so the prisoners could have a vacation. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it showed the power of radio because you didn't have to do it. You could just say, hey, we're floating on the water right. now. You know? Right, 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 right. And uh, uh, Dartmoor Prison, that was the prison. It was called oh, Ta right? Tales of Old Dartmoor. It was, I think, the name of the of the uh, episode. And uh, they, they decided that they all wanted to go on a vacation, all the prisoners, so they floated <laughs> Dartmoor Prison across the English Channel, I think, to France or something like that. That's just so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but... But the, but the comedy that you, you've enjoyed coming out of England all these years, even the Beatles movies were influenced by them. Oh, yeah. Because um, the director of the Beatles movies, I'm trying to remember his name right now, was also the director of some goon movies. They oh, made, really? They made little goon shorts. See, I didn't know they made goon shorts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the... the uh, what the, the something of the Muckanese battle horn I seem to remember as as one of the, uh, Lester was the director um, and he did things he did goon videos maybe he did them with Peter Sellers or he did something with Seekum or whatever but he he was doing those prior to doing a hard day's night Richard Lester uh, pr prior to doing a hard day's night and hmm. uh, I didn't know that yeah yeah. And so that's why the Beatles picked him to direct their first movie. They said, "Oh, he did the Goons," you know. Right. And and uh, so uh, that was the beginning of Lester's big movie career. Uh, but that th those films were influenced again by the Goons. Right. Uh, and and so most of your comedy, folks, that's you know the comedy that's informed your sense of humor over the last uh, fifty years. Because of the goons. Yeah. Oh, more than that, over the last 60 years. Well, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm just saying 50 because I can't count. But I don't know how many years. But they were on in the 50s, I think. Right, right. I believe so. Middle to late 50s. So right. that, well, that would Early be... Early 60s. That would be 60 years. Yeah, 60 years. 70 years, maybe. Maybe. Uh, almost 70 years. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, I wonder if... Uh, Seekum, I don't think, is alive anymore. And I don't know if uh, Spike Milligan, I don't think, is alive any longer. I don't think any of them are alive. I don't alive. think any of them are alive any longer. Yeah. No. But they influenced me, you know. I mean, I, sure. listen, I listened to them, and then everything in comedy that I did had a little bit of goon in me, you know. Oh, Yeah. But I love just the anarchism of the of the uh, of the you kings of the non sequitur. They they made no sense whatsoever. Right. I, I mean, if I if I said to you that the audience would break up when uh, uh, I think it was C uh, uh, Milligan would go, nick, 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 you know, right, and and the whole audience would go crazy because right. he was doing that in every episode. So when he did it, <laughs> it was like. Nick, 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 you know, I mean, uh, it, 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 it's hard to really tell people how funny they are. And it's very hard to tell people where they can find the goon shows. Probably, if you go to YouTube and type in goon shows, maybe something, maybe. something will come up. I know they did the last goon show in which they filmed it. And there's a video of that out there. No, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 of them standing at microphones doing it. Uh, right, but, holding scripts. Yeah, but they all went on to their own little forms of career. You know, Seacom became a guy in the musical theater. He did, uh, I think, uh, what was it? What was that thing, uh, the musical? Um, uh, uh, the, the, the Oliver. Oh, okay. He, yeah, he was in Oliver. And he, he showed up a lot of places, but his career wasn't that incredible. Uh, uh, Milligan's was pretty good. He did a lot of British TV. 
Mm-hmm. But you know, the one who had the biggest career was Peter Sellers, right? Uh, obviously, absolutely, obviously, and and all of what he did in future years was informed by his work with the goons as well. You know, oh, absolutely. So, anyway, so we gave you. We went from his teeth falling out to a guy with a stroke to the goons, and I don't know how we got there. But we did. But we did, and it was a nice trip with uh, with our good friend. Uh, Stephen Kravitz. Steve, thank you for being with us. Will you do this again with us next week? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, without a tooth in the front, smile. (laughs) Go ahead, smile. Smile. (laughs) There he is, Stephen Kravitz. Bye, Stephen. This is GavNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, well, good, 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 good. Always uh, always great to have Steve Kravitz here, toothless or not. He'll get those teeth taken care of eventually. <laughs> oh, listen, might have been bothering me. So, you know, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Forgot to turn the lights on. There we go. Now the lights are on. And I'm ready to go. We got one person waiting to come on here. So, and he's, he's, he's quality, so, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether uh, he's just pure utter quality and uh, it's uh, hold on a second it's uh, Charlie Wallace uh, here let me just uh, go, bring the zoom panel in here there's Charlie hello Charlie hey Alex hey it's just you and me Charlie looks like wow We're holding down the fort completely yeah, I guess everybody's too PO'd about that Supreme Court news. Yeah, well, we'll uh, we'll get to that in a moment if we get any more people here. But in the meantime, since you're the harbinger of death, give them the death count. Yeah, it was uh, for the first time in about 12 weeks, we had over 1,000 people die. 1,880 Americans died today. And what's the current amount of people dead? Nine hundred ninety-six thousand six hundred and twenty-four. Well, you're wrong. NBC tonight said they recounted, and it's at over one million now. I believe it. Yeah, I've probably been over one million for weeks. It doesn't surprise me. These numbers well, we've been seeing have been artificially low. I, I think they have been artificially low, and um, but we're so we're going back up again, right? Yeah, we've definitely been going back up the last two weeks, and. Even more, probably. So what the real problem here is, is that um, people are just, you know, I think we just got too loosey-goosey about this. Everybody got so sick. I'm sick and tired of having to put up with this. Well, yep. you know, uh, the COVID is not sick and tired of you. Yep. You know, and... I was at the store yesterday, and I, I swear, less than 30%, less than a third of the people had masks on. I would still wear a mask indoors. Yeah, still. I, I, I was one of those. You know, one third. outdoors. I always questioned it. Okay, yeah. because if you were just far enough away from other people, yeah. you're 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 pretty cool. You know, but when you're in a, a place that's enclosed, uh, that uh, that uh, disease has nowhere to go. But I mean, we I, we got too loosey goosey about this, and I think our president's gotten too lax about it, and I think even Fauci's getting lax. Even about Fauci it. said we weren't in the pandemic anymore, so everybody threw the masks away. Yeah, yeah, don't throw your masks away, folks. They may you may need them, you may need them, you know. So I'm sure here's a guy that doesn't wear a mask, uh, doesn't rather doesn't not wear a mask. You better believe it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he's he's definitely in the group that might uh, be subject to it. Um, I, I am too. You know, uh, in spite well, of the, uh, the diabetes. Yeah. Well, diabetes for him, and 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 uh, for you, I guess your diabetes is makes you more prone to getting it and dying from it. And uh, of course, uh, we have. Uh, um, uh, Jeff here, who has a myriad of problems, uh, but he's you know he's healthy. But COVID couldn't kill him if he weren't vaccinated. So I had a, a friend who uh, took all the medications, mm-hmm. 
all the shots. Mm -hmm. He still got it. Well, that's happening, but the, the, but he how sick did he get? Pretty sick. Yeah, but yeah. was was he hospitalized? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, wow, they wanted a rare one. Yeah. Yeah, but let's just say he's a too fat guy. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. You know, and older. Mm hmm. Older than us. Oh, let's really? Say. Older than me? Yeah, maybe. Well, then there's every reason, you know. I mean, yeah. you got to keep the weight down. That's one thing you got to do. And there are a lot of other things that, you know, are contributing factors. And he had quite a few of them. So, so what are you going to do? You know, so. Well, yeah. anyway. Yeah. He sounded a little better this time. But. Yeah. So is this going to be it tonight? I wonder. I don't know. No, oh, I think. Where's everybody? It, it, I I have no idea. Is it? There's no no sports going on, are there? Or what? Or, or are there? You know. Uh, let me see here. Let me basketball see. playoffs are going. The the basketball mm -hmm. playoffs are going. Which basketball? Uh, NBA. Well, NBA. Major okay. League. All right. All right. So, uh, all right. Oh, uh, so we got that. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here, uh, oh, here's Alan. Lucky us. Uh, here, here comes Alan. Uh, yeah. Hello, yeah. Alan. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Alan? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good, uh, good. But it's uh, good. what? I'm a little red side, but good. I'm on the red side. Yeah, your face is a little red. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's because I have the orange light on me. Okay. See, I mean, I can change that if you'd I like. That was only for Trump. You oh, know, you're sorry. always, you're always just so. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Complimentary. I, I usually, I just. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're looking. I, I pink. usually you're, am complimentary. You're looking pink tonight, Alex. Uh, well. <laughs> it's pink. Yeah. See, there you go. Charlie's just nice, not, not nice enough to bring it up first. It's okay. It's all, it's all good. So I asked you how you were doing. I said I'm doing good. I was doing good. I'm very complimentary. I just you're the one that's always adjusting your damn lights. What you see is what you get with me. Well, I mean, I can I can adjust it so that it's not as pink. Doesn't matter. To you're me. looking pink tonight, Alex. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's pink. <laughs> see, there you wait, go. Minute, wait a minute. Somebody's got it. Somebody, somebody's uh, on. Turn your turn your your. Uh, it's all, it's all good. So I asked you how you were doing. I said I'm doing good. I was hey, doing hey, good. Hey, hey, John, your audio. Always adjust your damn oh, lights. Yeah. Uh, you're, 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 you've got your you've got our audio coming through. Uh, oh, okay, great. hang on, hang on. Yeah, Doesn't hang matter. On. Close the browser. Yeah, you, know, you just kill the browser. Just get rid of yeah. the browser. All right, there you go. There you go. You're fine now. All right. Did you hear about uh? What's his name? Uh, getting attacked on stage? Well, we'll, we'll get to all of that before, okay. in a while here. I yeah. I What's on in the background, John? You got TV or radio? <laughs> Boy, you can't. You. You, you were here full force, weren't you, John? <laughs> Having a good time. Sorry, John. Yeah, yeah. Well, once we get everybody just right, we'll, the show will be almost over. <laughs> yeah. Time to go home. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, um, uh, I'm, 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 you know, I, I, every Monday and Tuesday nights, I usually figure I've got a free night. I could do something with my life or just go in the other room and watch some TV or maybe go take a walk if I want to. But uh, lately, Jack Bishop has been having one problem after another. Yeah. Yep. And so I can always plan on about two minutes into his show getting a call going this thing won't work if and he would, I, I don't know I, if he got on zoom i i know that there's no that, no that has nothing to do it had nothing to do with zoom oh. had nothing oh, to do okay. with zoom it had nothing oh, to do okay. with the with the audio coming I, from okay. you guys what it was is it it was a uh, some, somehow he either screwed up or something and moved his files so that when he used a program we have called But and it was getting going to go record, 
it said can't find the folder to record on so we can't record it yeah. and and uh, so what I did so um, he couldn't get on the air so I have uh, have him so that I can get onto his machine there I've always done that as a backup and so I found the file and then I reset the butt so it would look for the file in the place where I think he moved it and it worked fine yeah right so now he's on the air that's on Friday I think Monday he can't get on oh no it was Monday he couldn't get on because of that yeah. reason and so we got him on so he yeah. was but then uh, then he had a some kind of problem I don't think he actually did a show on on Monday but then on Tuesday uh, we got the whole thing set up and he ready to go and he re he get, goes on the air and he doesn't think he's on the air now he's on the air but he doesn't right. think he is all right and he was sure frustrated so now I, now i've got to go and check that out okay so now i'm back on his machine again and i said here let me just click this boom oh and what happened was we hadn't saved that configuration so i simply reset it so it would go find the folder in that particular place and he was good to go, but then he didn't think he was on the air, which he was. I don't know why. And then when the show was over, he said, well, it all screwed up again. I said, what happened? He said, uh, the, um, uh, 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 the thing didn't record. And I went and I found his files. I found his recordings. I said, there they are. I mean, he was so ready for this whole thing to fail, <laughs> that, you know. Uh, and so, I mean, everything was fine. Everything was just fine. And last night I hear him tell you guys who were called the show, uh, well, you know, it's just this damn computer just keeps screwing up on me. No, the computer did not screw up on him. The program screwed up because he screwed up. Okay, but I was able to fix it and we're off and going and everything's fine. But it's like every night that I think I've got a nice evening to relax and take it easy all of a sudden 10 30 I get a call this thing isn't working you know so. I I felt sorry for you last night at the when we were on the show and he was I thought he says I gotta call Alex again I thought god damn the guy can't even relax yeah you know what do you we're, say we're happened? on yeah. we're talking if it's not recording it ain't the end of the world no, it's a recording. In fact, I found a thing that whenever he runs this particular program, it's called But, it automatically starts recording. Okay? He had always been starting it by hitting a record button as well. And he only had to hit, just to hit the, uh, go on to the, uh, send the encoder to the server. And at that point, it automatically will start recording. So he was recording just fine. You know? I think the problem is, He's not techie, and you are. I mean, that's well, not a problem. Well, it's not that I'm techie. I tried to explain to him that I always tried to know exactly how everything works. And the reason I want to know how everything works is because I'm at the mercy of the technology, and I don't want to be. I want the technology to be at the mercy of me. And so even from the very beginning in radio, I mean, I could walk into a control room and I knew what every, how the control board worked and how every button worked and everything, even though I wasn't on that side of the control board. Just so I knew. And it, it's kind of like Alfred Hitchcock, when he directed films, knew everything about making a film. Everything. So that he could walk in, he, said, I, he says, I never set up the lights. He said, but I come in, I look, and I say, that light needs to be pointing over there, and that light should be pointing over there, because that's how I want it to be. Okay, and the cameraman, do you have a such and such lens on right now? He knew all that, because he knew if he, you know, if he was just a director, hey, move here, move there, and, and relied on everybody else, he didn't have complete control over his product. And so that's what I, what I was trying to tell him, is that you really, it's a matter of knowing this stuff, which is not it's not rocket science, you know, not the stuff that we're expecting him to do. And he's just, I think he's just so afraid of it that he's expecting it to fail. And his computer did not fail on any level. Uh, his, the program did because it wasn't programmed correctly. Here's the funny thing for me. 
is I'm I'm like you. Once I know how something works, I can help other people. So I help my whole family, my friends and everybody, as long as they have a Windows machine. I understand how Windows works, how to make do this, that, and the other. The mechanical end of it, I know electrical, I know mechanical. So my computer three months ago is giving me problems I've never seen before. I get tech support. Mm -hmm. They were worthless from Dell. And I, I just got tired of it. I just went out and bought another computer. You know, and it's kind of strange that I can fix everybody fine, everything. I took the thing in, and it was a hard drive that was failing, a two-year-old Dell business computer with a failing hard drive. So, I mean, I changed it. You know, now I got a new computer sitting behind me that doesn't do anything. Yeah, well, uh, all you needed was a hard drive. A lot of yeah, times, a lot of times when computers, I'll say this to people who are listening now, when it, when computers go bad on you, <clears throat> that's not a bad thing. Because if you wind up having to erase everything and start from scratch, it just makes the machine fresh, yeah. you know? Because uh, over, over several years, especially on Windows machines, they get cluttered. Oh, definitely. They get bloated, they get top heavy with programs that haven't unloaded. You know, every time you unload a program, you don't unload everything. And so um, uh, it, it, it's kind of a blessing in disguise when all of a sudden you say, okay, it's terrible, but I've got to I got to race this whole machine and start all over again. Windows 10 has a fresh start button where it erases a lot of stuff, and, but it doesn't erase your files and it just reinstalls stuff yeah. for you. And that's a, it's a it, I've used it on my laptop a couple of times. Yeah, well, another, that's good. Another that's Dell good. product. Yeah, because Windows. Windows gets very bloated. It's oh, yeah, very definitely. bloated. Uh, I'm, Max don't as much. Yeah, well, Ma Max are pretty simple. Pretty one, simple. One thing I've learned: no more spinning hard drives. Solid state hard drive is the way to go. They're much faster. They're much more reliable. Mm -hmm. Much more expensive. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, not, and when they I, go, boy, do they go. Oh, I, I haven't <laughs> had one go yet. Thanks. That's good to know. They do go. You, you know, know, with a, with they, a spinning they, drive, you can write over and write over and write over programs all the time. With a with a uh, solid state hard drive, the way the technology is, you can delete programs and reinstall back over that same piece of of, of uh, hardware about six times, and then that area becomes unusable. Is that on the solid state? Yeah, that's on the solid state drives. Hmm. I didn't know but that. They're, but they're ultra reliable because I leave my computer on all the time, and there's no drive spinning. It's yeah. just sitting there, a chunk of silicone. Well, this it's machine, uh, this. This machine I've got here is uh, is solid state. Well, yeah, you know? my next laptop is definitely going to be an Apple. But my but all my uh, my hard drives basically are backed up to a what we call a RAID. Right, multiple and, hard drives. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a whole RAID system, and that's yeah. really that served me pretty well. You know, if if any one of the drives goes bad, yeah, you simply I pull continue. it out, replace it, and it just rebuilds that drive and New hot swap but it, yeah but in the yeah in the meantime everything's still working yep you know so anyway so yeah, it, it, yeah. Yep. it works for you yeah so let's I, I, I don't know that I would invest in one for a home computer but uh, oh oh I I would every time I've got really? all my oh, movies maybe I'll look into it. got all my movies on there all the shows I've done here I have on there I know that if this and it can go bad if this raid goes bad on me. I simply pull out all the drives, get a new raid, put the new drives in, and just sit there and wait. You know, are these spinning drives or solid state drives? They're spinning drives. You can put solid state drives in there too, but solid state drives still aren't cheap. No, you know? no. Um, no. And um, the way they're building hard drives today, they're pretty good. They last a long time. You know. I usually get, when I get spinning drives now, I get Western Digital Black. They're made for gaming, but you can use them for anything. So they're pretty well built for a spinning drive. Yeah. What is that? What but is... my new computer has solid state drive, mm -hmm. an HP gaming computer that a friend of mine bought, couldn't afford, mm -hmm. and he had never even set it up. So yeah. it well, enough of this. This is, this is boring. Yeah, let's talk people. about something else. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the Supreme Court. What Supreme Court? Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The worthless. You know, I, 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 let me put it this way. Okay, you, you can be against legalized abortion, all right? 
But the fact is, it's that that constitutional right has existed now for, and it was dictated by the Supreme Court, by the way, in a court case for about was fifty it 40 years. I think fifty years. Seventy-three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, when you've got something as a constitutional right, as a right, yep. it should remain that way. And, and it is not the job of the Supreme Court to sit around reversing other Supreme Court decisions. If the decision has been made, that's it, on to, on to other problems, you know? Um, uh, granted, it's not going to be like it was where it was just illegal all over the country to do abortions, you know, and whatever, that if California wants to do an abortion, it will probably be all right if, if, if Oregon wants to, or Washington, or New York State. I mean, here in New York State, nobody has to worry about not being able to get an abortion after this happens. But, you know, it's that person who lives in Texas who can't afford to even drive 20 miles, uh, who can't get out of state to go get the abortion. Yes, Charlie. Uh, the problem is if the Republicans take over the House and Senate this, this fall, and then when the presidency in 2024, they will pass a federal law making abortion illegal everywhere. California and New York can just go fuck themselves. You know, why? It, what I don't understand is why this is such an issue. You know, to begin with. I don't know either. Huh? I don't know either. I mean, they're making it illegal, even even in the case of rape mm -hmm. or in the yeah. case of, in the case of, in the case of, you know, yeah. where uh, like, anything, I mean, okay. A 11 year old girl gets raped by her uncle or something, gotta get, gotta have the baby. Absolutely. What a bunch of horse shit. Yeah. Yes, Tony. You know, what, you know what's funny is that they're, they're worried about what they got in Florida. Wasn't he like all against people wearing masks? You, know, you don't have to wear oh. this and that. But he'd be worried about them probably get, uh, get, not getting an abortion. Like, it, let them do what they want, but yet they're trying to dictate what they want to do. It's all because it's an election year, I think. I really think they're just trying to. Well, no, to the I mean, they, they, this, this had nothing to do with the election year because this was, this was a case before the Supreme Court, you oh, know, okay. that they had to decide. Yes, Charlie. This has to do with them finally getting the Supreme Court makeup that they want. Mm -hmm. And they did that by stealing two Supreme Court seats. They wouldn't let um, Merrick Garland sit. And then they, they had Amy, what's her name, a, a week before the election. Barrett. Yeah. 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 And, and so that, that's the difference. That's made the, the difference. Yeah. Because Roberts, even Roberts wasn't so ridiculous as to think that you could take away a woman's right to, to decide what happens to her own body. That's right. Uh, yes, uh, John. Yeah, all five of those conservative uh, Supreme Court justices were appointed by presidents that were elected by the minority, too. Right. Didn't even get a majority of the vote. Yep. 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 Well, Biden and Trump. Yeah. Well, the Supreme Court is supposed to be uh, nonpartisan. Sure isn't looking that way. Well, it, it, you know, I mean, I has it oh, oh, has it always been nonpartisan? Has it been times when it isn't has been nonpartisan? I don't think so. Yeah, maybe I mean, not. everybody has a political opinion, but the, your job is not to enforce your political opinion. Right. The job is for you to interpret the Constitution and how this particular situation applies to the Constitution. That's right. Uh, and uh, I've never been able to figure out, you know, what that's all about. Okay. I think after this gets finalized, the next thing they're going to go after is gay rights and gay marriage. I think yep. so. Yep, they go oh, after sure. that. Yep. Absolutely. And interracial marriage. And wow. interracial marriage. Really? And they're already starting in the South, and it's been, fumes have been coming out of my ears. They're bringing back Jim Crow laws again. Blacks yep. are not going to be able to vote. They're not yep. going to have rights. They'll never do that. They couldn't do that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh like, don't say they'll never do that. Up. My nope. brother came out of work yesterday, Alex. Near he was working near the Freedom Tower, and he called me. They had a big rally against the uh, abortion thing. They're already like rallying in the city, like if they, you know, they're worried about it turning it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There was I know women that are going to Washington right now that are on. I know women that have already gone to Washington. Right. They're right. right now. You know, the problem is, the only Super problem with protesting this is, what good does it do? It's not going to change anything. No. 
No, it won't. You know. It's just like when Trump got elected president or selected as president. They were rioting in the streets in San Francisco and Oakland and everything. Did it change him being president? No, that's no. a million women's march. I mean, yeah, all that kind of stuff. You know, and I understand, you know, the reason somebody wants to march or to protest is because they're so irate about it that they want to have their voices be heard. But the fact is it doesn't do anything. Uh, it, what you got to do is you got to get uh, people signed up to vote and get them out. To, I get the vote out and get some of these uh, states to change their political makeup in the Senate and in the Congress and uh, in the governor's houses. Yes, John. I, I think we got to do something about money in elections because, you know, this, this idiot that got uh, J.D. Vance guy, mm -hmm. he, he basically got bought by, I mean, you know, they basically bought that um, primary for, for him. And the, the guy that, that's paying for it is uh, Peter Thiel. Yeah. So, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, like $10 million came in at the last month and Trump's all acting like, oh, it was all because of me, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, it was my blah, blah, blah that, that put him in. But no, it was the 10 million bucks from Peter Thiel. Yeah. And then would disagree with you, John. I was listening to him last night and their analyst said that this is a test of Trump's power and the guy that got voted in. Uh, got way ahead when Trump endorsed him, 10 points or something. Hmm. Hmm. So and CNN is, is far from conservative. So. Yeah, but I don't agree with that. I mean... I don't agree with it either, but I think it is what it is. Uh, Charlie? Like Char Char on the bandwagon, because, you know, you know, like even when he when he was at that, uh, that rally, he goes, yeah, um, well, they're all good. Uh, it's J.D. Monroe or whatever. The it's other a guy. wrong name, yeah. <laughs> He called him the wrong name. <laughs> Who called him the wrong name? Trump did at his rally. He goes, we're all here for J.D. Um, um, Monroe or whatever that other guy's name is. You know, he used the other guy's last name. <laughs> yes, Charlie. The whole point that they're ignoring is that the 13th Amendment says that involuntary servitude shall not exist in the United States. That's word for word what the 13th Amendment said. Yep. How, is in, how is forcing a woman to give birth that she doesn't want to give birth, how is that not involuntary servitude? How is it, though? How is it? To, uh, Making her do something she doesn't want. Believe me, giving birth is labor. I was in the labor room, delivery room, for my birth of my kids, and I know hours and hours of hard work went into those births. Did you watch the birth of your child? Yes, all three of them. My father. Did. Uh, what's My his father name? George, James Corden the other night on the Letterman show on a clip I was watching said that uh, he had an uncle who told him, uh, are you going to go watch the birth of your child? He says, yeah, I'm going to go down there and watch it. And he says, don't. Yeah. He said, don't do it. He said, um, uh, it's kind of like watching a, a train wreck. He said, because <laughs> My like that. he said, he, he, he said, what was it? What was his? Uh, he said, "It's kind of like watching your favorite pub burn down," <laughs> you know. And he said, "Then they rebuild it, and you have to go back in, but it's not the same as it used to be." <laughs> I don't know. It's always. <laughs> I think it's like watching a miracle happen. Yeah. It was. I, I wouldn't have missed it. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Really. Yeah. I can't. But my dad wasn't allowed in the in the back in the fifties. wasn't allowed in the in the, mm -hmm. in the delivery room during births. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's it's uh, it's uh, it, uh, it it's a shame that this whole thing's going down like it is. Uh, I think the real shame, and we all know that it's the real shame, uh, is the fact that uh, the the whole thing got okay. leaked ahead of time. You know. Um, uh, I think a Republican leaked it because they wanted to give time for the, the, the anger to subside. If it had come out in July, it would still be there by the time November came around, and that would hurt the Republicans even more. Yeah. Now, it, 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 my question is, even though this was a draft, are they all held to what they, what they said they were going to do, or can they change well, their mind? 
No, mm. not at all. They could change their mind, but then everybody would know that so and so changed his mind. And who wants to have that over their head? Well, who? Why should they care? They've got a job for life. They don't have to worry about anybody loving them or not loving them. Yeah, well, that's the problem. You that's know, true. I mean, and who's going to change their mind anyway? All those cons- the conservatives. None of those guys are going to change their mind. You know, you already know. You know, you already know that they're going to deter. You know, uh, recall it or whatever. Going to recall what? I mean, whatever. You know, they're gonna they're gonna strike it down. I don't. Wait think a minute! They're going to strike what down? Roe. Oh, oh yeah, they're going to yeah, they're going to strike Roe down. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what, you know they're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think there's no big surprise. I don't know that any. I keep trying to figure it out and, and Google it and find out. I don't think any Supreme Court decision has ever been specifically said by a future court that previous court made the wrong decision. I don't think so. Well, they've stood by the. the yeah, there the, was. The, yeah, the the <coughs> Plessy and Plessy. No, as far as I know, it's still not illegal to be discriminatory on trains. Well, all well, they said in Brown v. Board of Education is you couldn't discriminate in schools. That's okay, right. that's uh, right. But did, didn't they say that Plessy was wrong or something? Or well, people may have had that opinion, but that wasn't part of the Supreme Court decision. No. Nope. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, but in this, but it, it, it effectively did do away with Plessy, though, right? Well, like I said, as far as I know, it is still legal. Of course, you wouldn't get away with it. if you tried to discriminate on trains. You you'd be boycotted out of well, existence. Well, let's face it. This is all uh, part of this problem is all that fucking Donald Trump. All right, yeah. you know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he, I, I, I don't know about the Trump. I mean, I don't think he has any politics, if you want my opinion. I think he just wants to destroy power. the United States of America. He wants power. He wants to be Putin. Yep. He wants to be yeah. a dictator of the United States. Yeah. Now, so obvious. Now, does Putin, does Putin have cancer or doesn't Putin have cancer? Let's hope so. We don't know for sure. They can't verify it. Hopefully it's brain cancer and it's aggressive. No, it's stomach cancer. Oh, is it? Yep. Really? Yeah. Who says? Uh, suppose, that's the rumor. I mean, that's the rumor. The story is is that he's turned the country over to somebody else. Really? To some friend of his, yeah. yeah he's Who's, undergoing surgery. Yeah, so he's not going to be available for a while. Oh, man, I, I hope the doctors have a heart and fucking overdose him on the drug. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oops, I nicked an artery. Ah. Well, they're probably operating on him with a gun to their head. Yeah, you know. get it off. You know it. Talk about pressure. What? What'd you say? Talk about pressure. Imagine working on Putin. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You better not. You better not make me make this. <laughs> Even if it's not your fault, if he dies, you know you're dead. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, I we all, of course, we all wish him dead. Uh, and, and it's not a terrible thing. If you think it's a terrible thing, ladies and gentlemen, to wish Putin dead, this is a guy who's killing people by the tens of thousands, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and it, it just horrible, just horrible. Uh, and uh, I still don't understand why we don't just go in there and kick ass and take names, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For some reason, my camera's been glitching for the last couple of weeks here, and I don't know why. It doesn't matter. I don't care anymore. You know. <laughs> um, but I well, mean, we can't just go in for one. Huh? Or whatever. We we go in. It's twenty years of war. Yeah. We can't just go in, get the job done, and come out. Right. 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 So. I hope they open the stomach up and find out it's spread. <laughs> <laughs> inoperable it's going to die a painful death yeah 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 so anyway that's, that's nice yeah. so now we got this other thing that you brought up uh who brought it up earlier mm-hmm. with uh with uh um, somebody was it Alan or john who was the one brought up the other thing yeah oh yeah. the dave Chappelle thing dave Chappelle. yeah is that what i had heard there you, yeah. you you had heard you hadn't heard about the Dave Chappelle. No, I haven't heard anything about no, Dave. Oh, he was oh, doing his act. Uh, I think it was last night on uh, oh, yeah. uh, on stage at the uh, Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl, and it was a, I think it was a Netflix function. I just canceled the two Netflix. <laughs> Did you? 
<laughs> yeah, they want me to. I got an email. Come back for eight dollars. No, I'm waiting. Let them finish. Now. Finish the story, <laughs> Alex. Sir. Yeah. Anyway, um, they. Um, uh, he was on stage, and all of a sudden, some guy comes on stage, and he has what is what turned out later to be a toy gun, uh, but he had a knife attached to the front of it, and he lunged at uh, at Chappelle, and Chappelle uh, got knocked to the ground, and then I think he jumped up and got him, okay, and uh, then a bunch of other people jumped on the guy and beat the living crap out of him. Wound up with a broken arm and a broken leg, and uh, he's uh, he's uh, he's in a hospital right now. But that's prior to going to jail because this is a, a deadly assault, okay. Yeah. And it only it goes to show that it, not even comedians are safe anymore. You know, and uh, you had uh, what's his name? You had uh, Chris Rock was at the show. Rock. He got up and he said, "Was that Will Smith?" Get out of here. <laughs> Can you really? Uh, yes. no. Really? Is that true? No. Yeah. Really? Was that, was that, was that, was that Will can't. Smith? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, but I mean it was it was a uh, it was some it was pretty scary. And I'm I'm frightened for comics today. You yeah, know? me too. We don't like what you have to say about transsexuals, you know. Well, yeah. And that isn't the reason. We don't know why the guy went after him. No, we don't, right? Did they ever say why? Huh? Well, they, I mean, you know, we're still too soon, you know, so we don't know. And he looked like he was sitting close, Alex. I watched that TMZ thing. He looked like he was in the front, this guy. He, well, he, he could have been, but you don't know. He could have been all the way in back and just come forward to the front and look like he was coming from the front, you know, because he didn't look like the kind of guy who could afford the, the expensive seats. Because he said, yeah, he said something about his hair. Right now. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Okay, how about yourself? Yeah, we're doing okay. Uh, we we talked uh, on uh, Saturday night. We get together a bunch of mm -hmm. us. And we just have our own little discussion. It doesn't get air aired or anything like that. We talked for, what, three hours the other night? Woo. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to remember the stuff we talked about, and I can't remember one of the topics we talked about. Yeah, we kind of drifted around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, anyway. Fast conversation. Focus. What? Said, Those are the best conversations that yeah, just yeah. go wherever oh, they yeah, go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, yes, Kevin. Or did you, you, no, I was oh. just I'm saying I'm out of focus or something. Oh, oh, I know you're not. You're completely. Oh, you look okay. You, you, you yeah, look it must fun. be my eyeballs then, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I went to the urologist today. That's the probably why. Day. You went to oh, you went to the urologist today. That's probably why I messed with my eyeballs. Uh -oh. Uh oh, what did he? What did he do? What did he do? That? Nothing. Nothing. He I checked my PSA and said oh, it looks good. Checked my bladder. Said bye bye. How See did he here. look at your PSA? Uh, Oh, uh, never mind. Blood test. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. Never mind. I, I was thinking he looked at your prostate. I missed. <clears throat> no, he didn't even. He didn't even bend me over today. He he, he didn't uh, he didn't do the rectal. No. Nah. What fun was it? I know. <laughs> didn't even have a cigarette or nothing. <laughs> yeah. What's the, what am I paid for here? I don't know. Last time my guy did it, he shoved his finger up there, and after it was over, he said, "Was it good for you?" You know, I mean, <laughs> that's what I always tell him. I said, "Okay, now who, who's who's supplying the cigarette?" <laughs> I did have a doctor who, every time I went to him, this was back in my tw late twenties when I was here in New York for the first time. Who, every time I would go to him, would say, "Well, bend over," and he would stick his finger up my butt, and I'm going, or as the British call it, the back passage. Uh, <laughs> back passage. Yeah, uh, and and Your I, I, I kept saying every time I come in here. You stick your finger up my butt. He says, you like it, don't you? That's I said, you no. Back, right? No, I don't like it. <laughs> he must have had a lot of gay, you know. Uh, I don't know, boy. I'll patience. tell you, they stick their finger up my rear. It feels like they got their hand in there. He had his hand in my thing. No, he didn't. No, I felt like it, Alex. No, he it's a it finger. It's a little finger. Don't be a big baby. I could. I just. I would. Well, he, 
He he said I was all smooth, but I don't want to get into this anymore. No, well, if you're smooth, you're smooth. Yeah, but ouch. He's so persistent. You're also man. very cool, as opposed to. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> My sister's like, just do this already. Yeah. So what they what they what they feel for is lumps, abnormalities, yeah, they have nothing. and yeah. the size of it. So at our age, your prostate should weigh about an ounce, about thirty grams, thirty five. I don't know if you went in with a scale. <laughs> Yeah, right. He goes in with a scale. Yeah, <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I got it from Amazon. After, I got them. How do After you know? he finishes, he should put it in his report mm. about the size. And they usually estimate the weight. 30 gram, 25 How can you estimate much. the weight by feeling it there? I don't know. How could they do that? Well, I, used to, I, used to think, I used to think he was actually feeling the prostate. That's what I thought. But Alex. he's not. No? He's not. No, I said to him, I said, you know, I've had those seeds in there. Don't cut your fingers on the seeds. You know? <laughs> What's coming out? And he said to me, seed. well, no, we don't. When we feel the prostate, we feel through yeah. the membrane. There's a membrane on the other side, and we're feeling it okay. through the membrane. Well, they're feeling it through your. Through I'm your... sure this is something every member of our audience would like to hear right now. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I, listen, I, listen, I listened to the ramble last night, 20 minutes on fingers up asses. Gee, it was really swell and wonderful. Hey, Alex, can I ask you a question? But I did have a nice lunch in Monterey afterwards. <laughs> did you wash your hands first? I didn't touch nothing. No, he didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yes, Tony, what were you going to say? After I get through this whole ordeal, I was going to ask you a question. Can you... Phil's a nice guy, right? Because I was going to go out there and visit no, Phil's Phil. And a, Phil's a horrible human being, okay? <laughs> is he safe to visit, Alex, do you think, or what? What? Is he safe to visit if I fly out there in September? <laughs> ask Alan. Tony. Yeah. That's for you to ask him, not I'm for only me joking. to say. I was trying to see what you would say, though. But no, I, would say, I would no. say, I would do him a favor and say he doesn't want to see you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if he was listening. That's why he, he Because I hear there him. are several people on this panel that you've been bugging. Yeah. I've been, my sister's like, she just came over before. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Emily, I, my uncle called. I thought he wanted me to come back to work again. Tony. Did you get, did you get the biopsy yet so you know conclusively? It'll put no, your mind not, at ease. That's not till next week. But good. I'm pretty good right now. So, I mean, they told me not to panic or not like that. Oh, no panic. Now, I understand. I, I wanted to send you to my doctor, and you said he couldn't take you because you didn't have... He, he doesn't take Emblem Health. I call, First, he said he did his lady. And then when I called back, I was going to go for the second opinion because I got his NPI number. I had it written down here. Mm -hmm. And when I called back, I wanted to make... I called my insurance. They said, we're not sure if he takes it. They couldn't. So I said, I called her back. And then the lady in his office said they did. Then when I called back the set, I was going to go in there to do the, if they, you know, for the second opinion, she says, oh, he doesn't take emblem health. So then I decided that, you know what? I actually did like this guy I'm going to my, cause I like my GP. So it's like, you know what? I, my sister said, just do it. Cause you know what? It's not going to, well, I don't like this guy you're going to. Okay. I mean, I know because I think he's going too fast to go for a biopsy. Yeah. There are several other steps he should be taking first. Yep. I thought he was going to actually surveillance him because he went down twice. Yeah, yeah, but it was. You told me it was four, and then it was three nine three eight. Statistically, it's all the same number. I know, but it's headed the right direction. Yeah, yeah well, that's what makes keeps going said. down. Mine went from a six five down to a four three. See, I was and only I still and I still got a biopsy because he gave me a supplemental test of the blood that determined that there was a good chance I might have a high, what they call Gleason count. I and so the then, thing. and only then did he do the biopsy. He said he doesn't rush into biopsies. Right, you the know. first urologist I had, it went from 0.6 all the way up to 3.2, still in the normal range. And the guy says, let's do a biopsy. I'm like, whoa, there's other tests you can do first. I got a, I got a second opinion, paid out of pocket, no big deal, 300 bucks. And the guy says, you've got chronic prostatitis. That could cause the number to go up. Let's give you antibiotics for a few weeks and retest it. And it retested, and guess what? It's back down to where the normal range is. They did free PSA, which tells the likelihood of possibility of cancer. It was like 35. Anything above 25 is good. 
So. By the way, to tell you about what I consider bad doctoring, I, 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 I Sunday called Will Durst to oh, see if he had, if he had had his hip thing fixed. Oh, no. And uh, yes, he has. He they they repaired the ball joint. They put in a new oh, ball said, joint. But this this was something that was keeping him from going home for a year. The fact that he couldn't get up on this leg and it was in great oh. pain. And then it turns out that all he needed was to have the ball joint fixed. Now he's in the hospital, right? His wife Debbie, who has a titanium hip, had to get the other hip done. So she was in the hospital at the same time, and they had them both in the same room. Nice. It was the Good. first time, Debbie said, it's the first time in, a year, in two and a half years that we've been able to sleep in the same room. And I suddenly <laughs> remembered he snores. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she does too. But it was so adorable. The two of them in the same room, it was wonderful to see, you know. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, Tony. We're not going to sleep in the same room with you. No, no. <laughs> he's got like a bed and breakfast out there, Alex. Eight rooms, I told Phil. Phil told me. Well, he's got a bed and breakfast? No, Alan. I said he's got eight rooms in the house. My God. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have that many, um, Alan? Well, you'd be a son of a bitch not to invite Tony to come to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be crazy to invite Tony. Are you kidding? I wouldn't even want him using my bathroom. <laughs> Not oh. even if he really had a bad prostate? Oh, well, maybe then. Yeah, yeah, then you could sympathize <laughs> with him. He, he'd sit on the toilet seat with that bidet running for three hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah one of those. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a hotel. <laughs> That's why I won't have you stay here. Yeah. Oh, he's got a bidet in the bathroom. I'll never leave it. <laughs> Gee, all this talk has gotten our numbers up. I don't know why. <laughs> Don't say numbers. I get nervous. <laughs> they're up. They're down. They're no, no. discussions. <laughs> Different set of numbers. Yeah, and you know what? I tell you the truth. I'm like you, Alex. I get like a nervous wreck. I'm, even my sister said in my and her friends are she says you got nothing to worry about. She said, it isn't like you were ever really high high at all. That you what? Well, no, like my no, number no, was no, never no, like the, the point high. is the point is you could have it. You know, no. I know. I know. just don't want to. Think but about but it. you've gotten it early enough that it can be taken care of. I mean, look Absolutely. at now. Of course, at my age, it's not particularly dangerous. It's just got to be taken care of. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, I had it. You know, I had the literally had the cancer, right? So, I don't have it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you do what you got to do to take care of it if that's the case. You know, but, you well, know, I'm hoping, you know, don't start yeah. writing your will. Although, well, I, I already did a little bit. Although if you do stuff. will all your comic books to me, <clears throat> okay. I got a lot of books, too. Yeah. Nobody would be know how to sell it because they wouldn't know what it's worth. Don't leave like them to that yeah. bastard Shecky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God I got. I actually have a movie poster from him. He doesn't even know about it. I don't think I told him. I have it framed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, where were we? What were we talking about? My will. How do we, it out. Don't make your will. How, how did we get from Dave Chappelle to Tony's prostate? Uh, that's an ugly. It, mm -hmm. I got the prostate of a black guy, potentially, and the penis of a white guy. How do you figure this <laughs> I told that to Phil. So, what does a black guy's prostate look like different than a white guy's? That, I'm, I'm a Doesn't, but they are more prone to prostate cancer. Yes. I, yeah. under, I understand yeah. that part. And but I'm, wonder, it I'm wondering mean if their that prostate has, looks any different. Well, I'm wondering if that has to do with genetics or that has to do with just societal reasons why. You know, black yeah, Italian, yeah. it's all the same thing, right? No, but blacks, true, am I right? Am I right, Charlie? Them. Blacks have a higher propensity yeah, we to do. We do. prostate yeah. cancer. Yeah. So, do, so if you have a first relative, a brother or a father that has had prostate cancer, that puts you at higher risk. Well, my father never had prostate cancer. I'm just saying, it puts you at higher risk. It doesn't mean risk and, and outcome are two different things, you know? Yeah, yeah. When, when you know, Tony, when you get in your 50s, and 60s. Oh, it stinks. Your no, risk goes I'll, up. I'll, you I'll tell you why, why I got it. 
I got it because I'm 82 years old. I was 80 years old. Age will, most men, if they live long enough, will get prostate cancer. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And they say there's a God. You know, I mean. I don't want to meet him anytime soon. I'm afraid he's going to be Chinese, but all the Chinese jokes I did. If there yeah, was a, if there was a God that cared about people, Donald Trump would have done it. Totally. Well, no, yeah. it, it, it's just that I I just don't see that God was that perfect in making the human body, and the prostate is a perfect example of that. I mean, how do you put you know here here if, in case people don't know, the prostate really oh, is round, yeah, with a circ- It's like a circle, okay. And what, it, and, and what goes through that circle? The urethra, the urethra. which carries the yeah. urine. <clears throat> As you get older, it tightens in around the urethra until mm-hmm. you then have, have to get up at 20 times a night to go to the bathroom, all right? Yeah. If there was a God, and he was an all-knowing God, and he was a perfect <laughs> architect, he would have built the prostate so the urinary tract goes around it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a plumber, I can tell you that. Right. That's where I, can I add to that list that if there was a God, he would make testicles less sensitive to impact? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've always said that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> uh, what a bad job he did on that. You know, oh, on prostates. Well, when they had him on the cross crucified, you know, he said, I'll get you, son of a bitch. Or something. Well, wait a minute. That wasn't God. That wasn't that was, God. That was the son of God. God, you're a he? Catholic. That wasn't God. That was Christ. I'm all confused. They would kill anybody. You're all confused you between God yeah. and is, you, you don't know that one but is I the was son. I thought he was God. And one is the father. And yeah. I don't even know who the hell the Holy Ghost is. <laughs> I was all confused. I thought that was him on the cross. My note that that was, was God on the, on the cross? cross? No, well, no, no. Uh, yeah, no. there's three, three people, and one God. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, who? The, and then they got this other thing, the baby Jesus. What's the baby Jesus? Oh, my mother used to put that out of Christmas. No, time. but is he different than the regular Jesus? The baby. But that's what Jesus? she had. Oh, in that's the what the thing. Remember Moses when they put him? I love that movie when they put the baby in order and they put him down the thing. <laughs> you know, you know, Tony. If you do have prostate cancer and they're going to treat it, yeah. Um, you want to make sure that you tell your doctor that you'd like to have sex with a woman just once in your life beforehand. <laughs> I'm hoping. No, he told me it's like, listen, we'll just do it. He's, it's a 10, 15 percent chance tops. Oh, so 85 so, is in my favor. I said he's got some bedside manner. This guy. So, you know, they, they have a they have a formula and you can look at it online. Tony. Well, what you should say to him is, well, get back to me when it's a 50 percent chance and we'll do all this stuff. So, well, fifty percent chance is ten. I think. Uh, well, they can't even prove it because the the lady who's a nurse, my sister's friend, she was telling me that if your score was over a ten rising, then you got a fifty percent chance. That's your PSA. Anything okay. over a ten. But your, she said blood is very tricky. You could. You. I never really. Your ba- My baseline could be in the twos and threes because okay. I never really had it done. PSA, is, PSA is not a good diagnostic tool. That's the bottom line. It's, it yeah, was originally, you know, it, but no, it was originally no, designed. The PSA no. is not a, is not considered a diagnostic tool. It's considered a uh, a sign that you might. Yeah, have. I'm in the normal range still. Like normal range is a three five. You, four, you can four, be in the normal range and you can still have prostate cancer. Absolutely, yeah, that's what they, I was reading on that. That's what Absolutely. You know. But, so it's like, but all I'm saying is that the blood test has always been considered a a not a the best way to predict whether right. you have it or not, but it's an in- indicator that they should look at more things if they see it going up because it's just suspicious. Now, it could be caused by any number of things. Prostatitis can cause it. Uh, yeah. Uh, just an inflammation, a non-cancerous uh, swelling of the of the yeah. uh, prostate. Being married for 20 years, that can yeah, cause really. it. Thank <laughs> God I never had that problem. You know, Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, having your wife nag you for for years. And years. Oh, he even said age too. When you age, everybody ages differently. The body, so it's like, yeah. Well, you know, quit calling yeah. everybody. I know. I'm like an old maid. <laughs> you know. I'm making my uh, thing. I mean, yeah, I, I told him when he, I, 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 I had him call me so I could get. I was going to call you again, but he says Alex said lose the number. <laughs> I I told him lose my number. 
And I did. I wouldn't show what I said. He doesn't need to hear this old hen. The people (laughs) that I know that got a call from you, Tony, are me, Phil, Shecky, Alex, (laughs) Brian, probably Charlie, I messaged probably you. Jeff. Yeah, we messaged you. Oh, I didn't get to Jeff yet. Oh, did you I get one, Charlie? No, I... We had a message conversation go on for... Right. About, about this, about two. this. About four months now, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, folks, if any of you are watching us right now, make sure that Tony never gets your phone number or your text. <laughs> well, if he, if he has your phone number, then he has the text. See. Then I have the so, text, yeah. But... So make well, sure, make sure there's no number. way he gets your phone number. Cause that's, he doesn't have my phone number. We do it through Facebook Messenger. Because I have this watch here, and every time somebody calls on, you know, yeah. the Messenger, Facebook Messenger, it yeah. goes off. My wrist buzzes. And when he was sending me stuff, every five <laughs> seconds it was going oh, yeah. Bzz, bzz, bzz. oh, yeah. I was thinking of installing it in my ass and getting getting a cheap <laughs> thrill out of it. You know? <laughs> what are you doing? Pick up. I need the extra something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would kind of be like a self-winding watch. When you walk, it would wind up if it was in your ass. So. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, so um, uh, you know, we got a lot of things happening. We got the uh, Supreme Court, and then also you got you know you got the Ukraine still going on, still still a, a real deal. That's going to take a long time. Yeah, yep. we do know that we gave the. Uh, Ukrainians uh, the information on how to kill these generals that got killed that we were in on helping them find the generals right on yeah yeah so we've been doing something know where they are yeah I mean they we've killed they've killed about five or six generals yeah in fact that latest guy they sent what do they call him the 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 killer or whatever the murderer oh, yeah. or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh he uh, uh he got he injured was. <laughs> he no he got injured no he he survived survived but he was injured yeah so yeah uh-huh. uh, it, it's just it's it's terrible it's just horrible well, you know and and we're living in a horrible country right now you know what's going on is just it uh, i you know i'm I'm not going to be here that long, and thank God I'm not because I don't want to have to put up with what's coming. You know, ah, it can only you know, get it can only get worse. It can only get uglier. The latest thing on Putin's is is he may he may have incurable stomach cancer. Oh Where's that coming from? Because uh, the only one that's been reporting this is the New York Post. Yes. And that's a Murdoch he, he, newspaper. This is on Newsweek. Oh, Newsweek. Newsweek. Oh, okay. Inoperable cancer. Gee, I, I, is it slow? It's, it, it's speculation. <laughs> you know. Who knows? Um, well, it's supposedly. It probably started out as prostate cancer, and he didn't take care of it, Tony. No. Okay. It, yeah, that's right. right. No, but it, it's it's so, it, you know, it, it could be no. that this guy who's going to take over from him is worse than he is. Yeah. Think about that. You know, I don't think so. You don't think so? Why? You know him personally? Yeah, really. You got a Christmas card. You got you get a Christmas card <laughs> from every. He lives year? on Larkin Street in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well let you, me see here. Let me. Slides keep on taking over. I don't know how. What's going on? What? My i my iPods. Uh, ear pods whatever have a microphone and i keep on getting a message that it's taking over or something i don't know oh, oh you have you have an iphone too though right no no yeah. but i yeah but I, it's the ear ear pods is what keeps on showing up a message says your yeah. your microphone is now being used by your ipod or your ear, ear pods. L- listen just wait till you get what i got which is a refrigerator that sends me texts Oh, fuck. Okay, that, that then then you know life is not worth living any longer. Margie, Marjorie, you're opening the door too often. I keep getting a text. The the, the heat's oh, going. Oh, and she's up cooking. My watch goes. It's been turned on. It's been turned off. It's been turned on again. It's been turned off. The it's burner is on. And then I then I, once a month I get a letter, an email, an burner. email from my from my stove. So you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Everybody, uh, thank you so much. Charlie, Jeff, 
Alan, great to see you. John Larkin, always good to see you. Tony, great to see you. Kevin, you're the best. You're the best. And uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. They're out of here. They're going. They're disappearing. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we're uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection, which is over most of the same gap net. Uh, and uh, you can call him by using Skype and call him at GabNet Live. That's the, uh, the address, GabNet Live. And you'll be able to talk to him and have fun time being part of that citizen panel. Meanwhile, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody, and be safe.